Ah, uh, yes, tea sauce. A name that is becoming very quickly known in the gun world. The question is, are they diluting themselves too fast? Diluting, not diluting. Diluting themselves too fast by producing many, many models? Or do they just have the people, the knowledge, the know-how, and the experience to make decent guns? What do you say you and I find out today? This one came from Liberty Arms. Check them out. Harrisonburg, Virginia. I'm not allowed to link them. Just go ahead and Google them. Liberty Arms, Harrisonburg, Virginia. And then they can hook you up. You can tell them what you're looking for. And they'll be like, sure, I can get that. Or, nah, sorry, man. But most of the time, it'll be, yeah, sure, I can get that. And this one was one I've been waiting for. Now, I work for the gun store, full disclosure. And that means I'm able to get a little bit better price than you guys can. So I waited until a distributor had it rather than ordering it directly from T-Sauce. That's why sometimes my reviews are a little bit later. I'm not like them assholes that get their guns given to them and then they have to say positive things. If I think this thing's a ginormous pile of corn-filled poop, I'm going to let you know that. Uh, I've said it on a few guns. I'll say it on more. That's just the way the ball rolls. That's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the way the uh, overcharged round explodes in your face. Whatever you want to put it. If you want to help grow the channel, maybe consider subscribing, all that stuff. Join the live streams. That's where I'm the most honest. Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, 7 p.m. till whenever we decide to stop. And we have a lot of fun. We talk about different guns, all kinds of different stuff. And it's a free-for-all for free-thinking individuals. Come and do that, help me out, and then we can keep affording to do things like this. All right, all that shiz out of the way, let's take a look at this. TSOS has stepped up their game massively. TSOS is an SDS product, and SDS has been bringing guns and manufacturing guns for a long time, bringing them in through like EAA and other companies. SDS has set up U.S. distribution and marketing, and with their Military Armament Corporation, which is another offshoot of SDS, I believe they're going to start producing here, and that is a really good step. But this guy is the Night Stalker DS, the Double Stack 1911. Uh, you guys can thank Mr. Staccato with their bullcrap desire to trademark the 2011 brand. I mean, it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I don't know why they did it. I understand that they technically created the 2011, and that's why they did it. But trademarking the name just means everybody's just going to call them 1911s, 2311s, 3011s, or just double stack guns. So, anywho, this is one that I've been wanting for a while. It's already been upgraded with a part or two, and we will talk about it as we go through the video. Full disclosure, already took it to the range, shot it, so you're going to be seeing probably a little bit of dirt and debris and dust. I did clean it, but, you know, I was just trying to make sure the carbon got out of it. But as it comes out of the box, it is a threaded barrel, lightning-cutted, optic-cutted, double-stack 1911 that comes with two 17-round Checkmate mags, which already puts it ahead of the Gerson that I compared it to before. I played with the Gerson 2311, and comparing that to this, when that is a $800 gun and this is a $950 gun, this is so far ahead of that gun that at $950, this is the way you go. It's still $500 less than a Prodigy, but man... Just the feel of the grip, the trigger, just the way it runs. This gun is so far ahead of the Gerson. This is as far ahead of the Gerson 2311 as a Staccato is from a Prodigy. Let's put it that way. But again, double stack, 1911. This is technically a 2011, and I may refer to it as a 2011. Just deal with it. Because a true double, or 2011, I was going to say a double 11. A true 2011 has a slide, a mid frame, and a grip module, which this gun does. It qualifies based on that. My wonderment is maybe a staccato grip module might fit. Who knows? Uh, this one is a steel frame, steel slide polymer grip module. That's why this is actually called the Night Stalker SF. The duty and the carry, I believe, are an aluminum frame, so they're a little bit lighter because they're designed to be carried for, obviously, duty. This gun has the full steel frame because it's designed more for a competition-oriented shooter. It, to that respect, it does have some additional stuff like the optics cut, has the taller sights, 
and the threaded barrel. The threaded barrel doesn't matter for like suppressors as much in competition, but it does allow you to put a threaded on compensator. So that's good to have. It also extends the barrel by a little bit. So normally these are five inch or 4.25 inch. I like the full size. 4.25 inch is nice, but I just, I think they're a little too short for my taste. It doesn't really fit the 1911 vibe. But this one with the full five inch with the threaded barrel actually gives it a 4.25 inch barrel, which is still very effective. Some people say 4.25 is the speed you want or the size you want so for optimal speed. I did not have any issues with this one at the range. It is a rail gun, so you can put light laser bazooka, small child with tactical lasers on it. And this is kind of because of Staccato. Staccato came out with their lineup, right? And when Staccato became Staccato, they were originally STI. Then they rebranded as Staccato. And they claim the gun is a duty weapon. Why would they do that? Well, they want to sell to government agents and it's agencies. And it's hard to sell to a government agency when you sell your gun as a race gun. But that's all a staccato is. And I had somebody yell at me, stop saying it's a race gun. It's not a race gun. Okay, yeah, whatever. Get flucked. Uh, it is a race gun first, duty gun second. And this gun is trying to do that as well. Has nice checkering on the front. Backstrap is flat with some checkering, and it has just pretty meh texturing on the side. I wanted to do this video before I hand it off to Greg at Liberty Arms because we are going to be actually doing some fun stuff with this thing. Keep a look for that coming up. Has ambidextrous controls for the safety. Uh, the slide lock slide release is in the traditional place for a 1911. It's not an enhanced one, which I kind of wished it was. I may actually look at changing that out. I have an extended Wilson Combat one, and if it fits in there, then it may be taking the place of this one. It has the nice safety so I would like to have a larger release. Uh, the offside is smaller which is something manufacturers have started doing. Rock Island when they first came out with the double stack did not have a smaller left sided or left handed sided safety and that could have been that can create issues for your right handed shooters because when it's down you could accidentally you know because you don't run with your finger in the trigger guard unless you're a moron but it can actually cause problems because when you have your hand up there you could accidentally engage the safety not so when you have a smaller one good on them the rear cut on this gun is actually glock cut so you could change out these sights however the sights that came from the factory are pretty nice it's got a high vis front with night sight and blacked out rear that is my preferred sight picture now you will see that i do have a hollow sun 407k on here green dot i prefer green that's just personal i picked them up pretty easily um with good adjustability in terms of the light. It needs to be zeroed. When I took it to the range, I forgot to Loctite it and crank it down, so it moved a little bit. But I will be reciting this before we take it to the range for a full re excuse me, review. A uh, little bit of a disclosure. Took it to the range today with my buddy Sam and his kid, and we shot it. We probably put six or seven mags through it, so probably like 110, 115 rounds included four mags suppressed. And it ran very well. It had a couple of hiccups suppressed, but it could have been the ammunition we were using because it ran the 115 fine suppressed. But when we switched to his 124 grain, it was a little bit finicky, but his 124 grain was not like Federal or a known brand. It might have even been Reman stuff. Uh, very good slide. Um, obviously, you know, people are saying, don't grab it, don't grab it. It's direct mounted. And let's face it, if you can unzero a red dot by pulling on it, it's either not attached right or it shouldn't be on the gun in the first place. But yeah, very easy to manipulate. It's kind of a tri top because it's the Night Stalker. They were copying the emissary when they designed the Night Stalker and they continued that here. So it does have the tri top design. It's not serrated or anything, but with this coating, it's not very glare anyways has just minimal cuts on the side but they are usable you can go over the top you can go from the back can't really go from the front although it is a half length guide rod so you could press check it if you need to but yeah you can lobster pinch it pretty easily uh, yeah, half-length guide rod, which you don't really see in a competition gun that much, but that's easily changed out should you decide you want to go with a full length. The pick rail is a four-slot unit, and it sits far enough underneath the barrel that if you run something like a TLR-7, it'll come to there, so it'll keep it rather clean. 
Uh, this is the K, as I said, which uh, gives it the co-witnessing ability, but also this is direct mount. If you wanted to run the C or something, you'd probably have to have a tall plate. So just keep in mind, you have to run the RMS C footprint. There are others that run on that. I just don't know what they are. Has a magwell on it, which is pretty large. It's actually pretty well finished. In fact, I'd say it's probably better finished than on my TS Orange, the infamous flight gun. You can see this has a harsher edge when it comes to the magwell than this guy does. Yes, it is molded, but still, I think it has a better, better feel to it. And this is removable. In fact, they give you a different roll pin should you decide to take that out because it's a little bit narrower. Glock does that with their back straps, but yeah, you could easily take that off if you don't like the way it feels. But being a government sized gun and me being only like four foot two, I'm able to get my hand on the gun really well. Obviously, I'm not four foot two because when you see Such hold a gun, it looks like he's holding a Nerf blaster. But when I hold a gun, it looks like a normal sized gun. Has a squared off trigger guard, which I do like. If you want to run super fast with your booger hook up there, you can. I've gone back to more just holding there. To that end, it's undercut here with a little bit of a ledge. So it helps get your finger into a place where you can hold it. Uh, no gas pedal or anything like that on this particular firearm, which is fine if you just have a good hold. You can either ride your safety or ride your other finger. A lot of guys have moved to a super high thumb hold. So they're putting their hands and using their muscle memory down here and then holding their thumbs up and kind of just resting it on the side of the slide. Don't know what that's about. It's just the evolution of shooting. I remember back when, when you're in the military, you would hold your arm to your chest while holding out one-handed. Has a very nice beaver tail with a generous memory notch. Sticks out quite far. I like that. Metal memory notch, metal safety, metal slide lock. The benefit to getting a TSOS is that it is forged and there are no, I think there's two MIM parts in the whole gun, but nothing that is functional here on the side. This is all uh, uh, forged steel. This is forged or CNC cut. This is not MIM. This is not MIM. And this is not as well. But as you can hear, it is a polymer trigger shoe, which I don't really care for. So I might swap that out while it's getting stippled. I might have him disassemble it for me and then put in a different one. Overall, though, I love the way it looks. I like the color. It looks like my... X5 Legion, and I like the fact that it came threaded barrel ready, or excuse me, threaded barrel, so it's suppressor ready with the taller sights. I run an Osprey 9 can, so I could just run with just the sights, but I like the fact that you can optics and run the suppressor height sights. Very nice. I don't know if I'm going to change any the internal parts other than the mag release and possibly the slide lock, but again, those are two very simple parts to use the gun uses checkmate mags which are very very nice prodigy staccato and uh, gerson i think will all use them and so does the t-sauce they are drop free but this mag release is shit you can see it's actually sticking uh, that will be coming out most definitely i'll have to order something either from wilson combat or maybe even a staccato one because that is crap in fact you hear it? That is stupid. And I don't like it. Sorry, $1,000 gun should have a better mag release. Trigger is nice, though. So it has the same trigger that they put in the Night Stalker single stack. It is of the medium length. It's not the long or the short. It's kind of like in the middle. Has a little bit of take up once you engage the or disengage the safety by grabbing the grip safety. You can pull it back. You can see it's got some take up and then break. Four and a half pound trigger on average. This one on my scale was at 4.25, so it's a little bit lighter, but very serviceable. Kicks you right back out to the wall and then into the next shot. I, again, prefer a short travel trigger and a short face trigger, so this will definitely be getting changed out, plus I want the adjustability. I don't like that much take up. Yeah, I know you should have it, so it gives you a little bit of preparation and readiness for the wall, but damn it, I like my 1911 triggers to just be hair triggers. But very nice overall. Skeletonized hammer. 
very nice. Uh, threaded barrel, like I said, it's half by 28 pitch. I ran my Osprey 9 on it, and the gun ran very well. Just make sure that you run your piston with the spring or a Nielsen device so that you can go ahead and maintain functionality without uh, blowing up your suppressor. Ask me how I know. So the optics plate cover is metal. I just took it out, put it in this little baggie that I had. Um, yeah, that was actually for a fiber optic set for a Taurus I bought. But yeah, so I just keep it in that. That way I don't lose those. And then the hollow sun is mounted and I can swap it back if I need to. You guys want to take it apart? Let's take it apart. First thing we'll do, check it. I put the mag in it, so let's go ahead and check it. And go ahead and make sure it's empty. I like to leave the hammer back, engage the safety. That allows me to push down on the front. It does come with the tool but I don't find it's necessary, although I'm going to leave it out because I think I need it for the slide locks. If I remember when I cleaned it after the range trip, it was a little bit loose. But you should be able to do that, especially when it's a half-length guide rod. Pull out the spring. This one is closed on both ends, so that makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes the spring is open on one end. Always keep that in mind. Typically, the open end will go into the end of the plunger, but that's not a problem here. Go ahead and spin your plunger back the other way. I like to leave it, or excuse me, the bushing the other way. I like to leave it until I actually take the gun to its disassembly point. Sorry, half length guide rod, you gotta kinda tilt it, otherwise the guide rod can lock up. Bring it back to the disassembly notch, push out the guy, the slide lock slide release. Oh, I, oh, yeah, he got it. Be careful not to give yourself the idiot mark. You won't get it on the polymer frame, but because of how much it sticks out, it could force you up and idiot scratch your slide, which, oh, no, that's just oil. Okay, I thought I just scratched it, but I didn't. Once you've done that, I like to keep it upside down and pull the bottom half off because of the half length guide rod. If you pulled it off the other way, it would just fall out. Go ahead and move your bushing over. Slide it off the end of the barrel and then go ahead and make sure your link is pointing forward. Disengage the lugs and pull the barrel out. Yes, my gun is oiled up a lot. I like to have a very well lubricated gun. It works well, yes. You can lubricate a gun. doesn't matter if it's a little bit wet as long as it's functional. Some guns don't like a lot of oil. 1911s do because they're very tightly fit. Looking at the fit and finish of it, you can see there's the locking lugs and there's the cuts they put in it to lighten up the slide a little bit. Very effective and it helps dissipate some heat, which is good, especially when you're shooting suppressed because the whole gun heats up. Has a nice uh, rear cover plate for the firing pin. Or, yeah, I was going to say striker, but it's a firing pin for the firing pin, and you can easily take that out. That's retained by that, just so you know. Series 70 style, so no drop safety. Let's face it, if you have a drop safety on a competition style gun, you are a moron. Looking at the frame, like I said, the mid frame is steel, so it has a little bit of extra weight just looking in through the top. So to disassemble these all the way to get the grip modules off, you have to unscrew that. You need to unscrew these because they go through the side, and then the whole grip module separates from the mid frame. Uh, you do need to be careful, though, because all of this is under tension. The easiest way to do it, obviously, knock out that roll pin, pull your back, uh, your, your rear mainspring housing down, and then you can start the disassembly. Don't just take these off and think you can pull it off in one piece because this stays in the gun, this doesn't. But it feels very nice in the hand. Again, very nicely finished inside. I don't know if I'm going to polish out these rails or not. I might, but they're pretty smooth the way they are. I only do it when I need to, and if I don't need to, I'm not going to. But the release feels really nice. Unlike the Prodigy, this thing had, did not give us any problems. So the reset was good, never stayed out of battery. The sear didn't stop the slide at all. I was very impressed with it. I like it. Very, very good on you, Mr. t -shosh. In order to reassemble it, it's the reverse. Go ahead and put your barrel in. Dunk. Locker in place. Put your bushing in now. Uh, number one, it will stabilize the barrel, but also then you don't have to feed it past the spring. Take your guide rod. I like to just set it in there, take your spring. I like to set that in there. By having the spring sitting on top or sitting on the guide rod while you're doing this, it allows you to hold the, the uh, slide in the proper position for lining it up. Otherwise, the guide rod would be flopping around in there like it was when I took it apart. Go ahead and line up your rails, slide it together while holding that in place. Uh, make sure that the swinging link is visible through the hole in the side of the gun. Because if you don't get lined up correctly, the gun will be 
not disassembled correct or assembled correctly and then it's not going to function right what i like to do is i like to insert the slide lock in here just bring the slide all the way back make sure that the barrel is in the right position once you've done that you can bring it forward to your assembly notch lift way up to clear the frame set down before you get in there so that you don't spin up and hit the slide with the idiot notch or idiot scratch lock your safety back in position once you're there Grab your plunger, stick it in the front. That's right, stick it in the front. You can oil it up before you stick it in, that's up to you. And then you're going to run your guide rod back down, plunger, and everything. I like to make sure that my threaded barrel protector goes back on because if you damage the threads, you basically make the end of it worthless for putting on any sort of accessories. I've never run a threaded mounted um, compensator on a 1911 but since this gun has it i may try one but this is my suppressor host this is if i get more suppressors which i intend to especially with the current uh, fast turnarounds for e-forms i'm going to get a couple of other suppressors and see how they run on different guns so if you want to see that make sure you come back if you want to help the channel grow you need to come and hang out with me three times a week mondays wednesdays fridays from 7 p.m eastern until we decide to end it usually five to six hours we talk about everything. We have a good time. We encourage each other. Don't be a racist ding-dong because that'll just get you banned. But if you want to come in, have a good time, as well as get signed up for some free giveaways and stuff like that, uh, do that. Come back. Have a good time. I love you guys. You guys are awesome, but I want to make sure the community stays awesome. Don't be a dick. You want to be a dick, go hang out at Grantham. Uh, if you like this gun, make sure that you like the video. Comment down below. Let me know if you have one, what your experiences are with it. Come back for another video. I did pick up the car that I needed to buy, so I'll be making a video on that. I uh, enjoy being here with you guys. Come back for the next one. And as always, I'll talk to you later. This was 21 minutes. Holy crap.